Um, I think we'd like to hear that. And then I think we'd like to set a deadline to like, that needs to be on the list, like well, at least one week in advance so that people have something to look at. Um, or, like a so, PR yeah, or like, like a doctor? Doctor. What's, what's that, Ian? The, sorry, what's the re requested format? Are we re requesting a PR or like- I mean, I, I, I guess a PR. Like, why, we, why not slides or something? Like, so to talk through it, right? Show how it works. Making the PR well, from that is is less difficult than constructing. Well, I, I, so, so look. So, I mean, I, I think the point of this is to socialize the idea beforehand, right? So we have a chance to think about it rather than think about it in real time. So, like, I don't think we need to be like have like a doctrine of how it needs to be presented but a pr obviously is tends to be very specific but like a well-written like one pager would be fine or like some slides that actually illuminate the design would be fine but it has to it should be pretty well thought through i think um but you know like okay. uh, i send it to a list with whatever format makes most makes sense sometimes the pr is really messy and hard to understand like a one page is way clearer uh but that depends on your writing ability and your ability to think through it clearly, right? Uh, uh, Colin. You're muted, Colin. I'm, I'm, I'm WebRTC permissioned me, and I've got no one to blame but myself. Um, I, I, all I was going to say, I, I th look, Martin, I think similarly where you're going up, like, I think that that the slides will be the most effective way to be able to actually think through these at the meeting. So I hope by the meeting, most of these can have reasonable slides, not us totally working off of PRs for something as complicated as fetch, but you know, whatever, I, I agree with what you, what you said. Um, so I, I'm, I, so, so I've heard two people, I will go ahead and put like a actual email on the list, which is like, if you want speaking time to present a proposal, which is not precluded, if you come up with a great idea in the middle of the interim, we're not going to say no, but if you are actually thinking about this and you're like, I want to bring a proposal, just letting the chairs know and putting it on the list when we can advance, I think is pretty reasonable. Um, but I also think it's a little bit cart before the horse because I'm not sure the group has completely agreed on the problem that we need to solve and what the sort of like use cases and requirements are around that. And so I, I think maybe we want to spend some time in the next week or two, maybe in this forum or on list or in for priorities, we use a small group, but like try to outline like any proposal needs to have the following characteristics or something along those lines or meet the following use cases. Otherwise, people will bring proposals and be like, oh, that doesn't solve my problem. And then someone will say, oh, I didn't, we don't need to solve that problem. Okay, that sparked interest. Will. Yeah. I was actually going to say something very similar. Fetch is a solution, right? And this group probably knows when you say fetch what you mean, but the problem to be solved is the, the difference in retrieving future live content from content that's in the past and the different semantics attributed to both. So you should probably write the problem statement up in those terms. And then the, the proposals for a fetch-like behavior is a solution to that. Uh, but there might be other ones that are better. OK. Thanks, yeah. Ian. Yeah, I, I was going to say exactly. I think we're all on the same page. I, um, I mean, obviously, I wrote a PR that everyone hated. Um, that was amazing. Thank you for all the feedback. I will go through <laughs> all. Um, it's always nice to get like a really clear, insightful feedback. Um, but I mean, I think for me, the only obvious issues we have outstanding that are like fetch related um, are the like flow control, et cetera, ones where like providing back pressure right now is really, really challenging, right? If, someone request request like a gig of old video data like th there's really no good mechanism for providing back pressure whatsoever um and it's a little scary um but the the other issues of fetch when i like i went back and looked at the original fetch prs we solved like almost all of them if not all of them and we've closed them through other means um and validly so, like, I mean, because originally we were trying to solve like six problems at once, and now we're only trying to solve like, I think a much tighter set of problems. And so I'm not saying we don't need fetch, but I think the need is uh, like very different from what it was a year ago, or whenever we first came up with it. So um, anyway, so I would actually like to understand which of the issues, problems, et cetera, we are trying to solve, because except for the flow control one, um, I'm not aware of anything outstanding that is kind of particularly. Uh, uh, 
there is a flow control, but there is also the issue that I think, at least for me, was the original reason we started talking about this. It's like the definitive status issue. Well, but sure, we can clarify that. But like we kind of added all the fields to make sure you get all the stuff, right? So like we added delivery timeout. Not really. We had a delivery order. Okay. Well, I mean, to me, it seems like if you say I want things in order and I give you no delivery timeout, then like, and I'm asking for data from the past, I assume I'm getting everything. Like, I don't understand what the other assumption I would have. No, you're you're not guaranteed because you can send like you have delivery order, but they are delivered independently. So you can have delivery order one to three, and then one and three gets delivered, but two gets lost. And why wouldn't I retransmit? Two. I, you would retransmit two, but you would not know if you lost two or not, or if it never existed. Okay. So, so that, yes, the missing object thing is that required thing, I think is what you're. So maybe that's part of the fetch thing is like, when is the missing object, missing group sort of uh, construct actually needed? Maybe that's part of the conversation. So I'm, I'm, he I'm hearing a lot of. Uh... I'm sorry, Suhas, you were in the queue. Go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to uh, say that from, from, from a recollection of the previous meeting, it was very clear that the group wanted a separation between fetch and subscribe. And also, Suhas, you were in the queue. And I think we, your, your audio kind of cut out for a bit. Uh, Okay. okay. So, um, a little bit. You want to try again? Nope. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, while, while Suhas tries uh, to get a better be signal, um, first of all, if you haven't signed the blue sheets, uh, please go. The, there's a link to them in the Google chat, uh, the Meet chat thing. So click on that and put your name on. Uh, so I mean, I think there's a very strong agreement here that we need to like ex express the use case and the requirements uh, like sooner rather than later. Is someone going to volunteer to like write that and maybe send an email to the list in the next uh, three days? Or, or maybe can we assign like two or three people that have somewhat conflicting views? <laughs> like I think, you know, Victor maybe and a, and a buddy who maybe sees it differently. I don't know. Sounds like there are two people that work in the same office that, that <laughs> maybe they have disagreeing views about this. You're muted, I, I, I do have a working progress. Yeah, if, if that helps. Well, but, well, but so. as you said, that it's a work in progress, but that's a solution we're talking about. Just making sure we understand the pro like we all agree on the problem before we look at solutions. So I, 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 that's what I, I tend to slightly dis dis disagree because we've been discussing this problem for like a year, and I think we know the problem. And as Ian said, with describing a lot of things in subscribe, the problem definition has become really small and narrow, and it's very clear to define. We have the point where okay. we can put solution now. I think uh, okay. restarting the entire thing, I don't think it helps the working group. Time. I'm not trying to restart it, Suhas, but if you think that the, you can make a succinct description of the problem that everyone has consensus on, go for it. Or if you think you can make a PR that everyone's going to like, go for it, because that's always good. But anyway, I'm sorry. But I, I, like, having worked with this group, I suspect that different people have slightly different visions in mind, and we we need to get on, we need to get alignment there before Otherwise, there's no common framework for evaluating how good a solution is at solving a problem. I confess to not knowing what the what the purpose is anymore. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I was going to propose you write an issue, which is to define the problem around fetch, and that allows for public wordsmithing. People can add it, and someone can be responsive. The, the OP can take comments and then keep refining the description until we give it a thumbs up. But that, rather than doing it with these, you know, emails between certain people, I think if we do it as an issue, it's a little more public. Victor? Yeah, I, I, I agree here with the was uh, I, I think writing down the issue is unproductive because I did that repeatedly five times and that did not seem to work. So I have no evidence that will work six time. Uh, at least with PR, we can, I don't even think this HPR will like converge us to the desired spot, but it will like at least bring us towards the right solution. Uh, so uh, I, I think the PR is 
a better way forward here. So okay. has... uh, I have a proposal. Like maybe maybe I, I can work with Victor and and how about we come up with one slide that explains the problem and and the pro and and, and if, if it makes sense. Okay. Uh, that I'm really worried me. that we will okay. spend six more months on just defining the problem. I, th I think I think mm. I, I don't want to spend that long. Yeah, so that sounds so Zuhas sounds like you're volunteering. It sounds like Victor's been burned enough to not volunteer, which is fine. So Zuhas, why don't you send either an email or file an issue or something that uh like attempts to articulate the problem? It'll be useful to me if nobody else. That's something. Um and like if people don't want to yeah, engage on that, that's fine. But it'll at least inform what we're talking about in, in Boston. Yeah. Please try to link to other I think there are issues that are relevant to Vish and like potentially could be solved by it. And so like um obviously you can file new issues as well, but like try to link back to some of the issues that we have outstanding. Because I think if you know, obviously the goal here is to close issues. So if we have five or six issues that can be closed by fetch, then that's very exciting. Um, Suhas. So it's my um, client issue. I'm trying to lower my hand. It's not working. OK. Will? Yeah, just in terms of defining it, Suhas is, and Suhas, speak up if I'm wrong, is very focused on real time media, right? And there's several camps within the mock work group especially camps that are not focused on real time. I think they should have a, a say in the definition of the problem because their perspective on the problem is going to be different. I'm just particularly thinking of Luke, who often had a different opinion. So you might want to assign Luke and Suhas to collaborate to come up with a problem definition. I think you get a better problem definition that way. Well, Luke isn't here. So I, I understand. <laughs> may All not be productive to sign in something. Who are not present, but... um, yeah, at least, uh, just, just to clarify, uh, the, the way I'm thinking about this is not just for real time, just, just to also solve in history, because um, we, are, we are also trying to build something that works with chat that requires some kind of fetch and going, going behind, and also some streaming kind of application that we are thinking in our uh, WebEx use cases too. So it's a mix of both. Um, but I agree, like, just putting something out there, uh, even if it's a form of a solution doesn't mean uh, we have to accept it. We can define problem with CRISPR uh, once we start looking at something. That, that's, that's what I was trying to say, because going back to drawing board is, again, we go go back to Den Denver. That's where everything started. Yeah. So I'm just I, trying I to see how can we make... I, my proposal was never to go back to the drawing board, but more to synthesize, like Ian said, like, where did we start? What have we already solved via other mechanisms and what is remaining? What are we still trying to do? So I don't think that it's like, sense. you know, like scratching our heads with a, with a blank slate here, but more just like informing ourselves from discussions we've already had and problems we, we know are outstanding. And like, I just, I feel like I see a disagreement and I think Will's highlighting it. It was just like, some people are like, okay, I'm gonna solve this specific problem or I'm just gonna solve flow control. But like, I don't know, I'm thinking about Luke's issue that was filed around like reliable live. And that was the input to the original fetch design team um, or part of the input there. And so just making sure that we've like gone back and like we're not missing things that we've ident identified as important. Colin? Yeah, makes sense. The, totally all on this topic. Hey, Sebastian, can you add your affiliation? I'm not sure what it is in the notes. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Uh, all right, are, are, are we beating this to death, Alan? Yeah, I think so. So um, uh, the action item, can we move we the minutes, is that uh, Suhas is going to synthesize the problem statement uh, as a new issue. Is that the correct outcome? I, I think so. And, and it's a living document. Like, it's not, I mean, to, to answer Will's concerns, you know, people can comment on it and add, say, I'm also worried about this, or that isn't really a problem, or whatever. Like it, it's the start of a discussion, but we should have that if discussion. You, if you want to use a wiki, now. Suhas, or create a new document, like inside of like the working group materials repo, um, I can create an, an interim folder. It, if that's easier for people to review and comment, as opposed to an issue, we can do it that way. Um, let me know. Yeah, and I, can we do that? That would work. And prob prob yeah, prob oh, probably what ahead, I so. would do is that I would uh, I would. Sorry, I, I would reach out to a few folks who've been active on this one, so and, and see if we can um, 
grab some some uh, some of their time uh, and see if that helps. We can come something together. Yeah. Okay. Can we? Uh, is there? Is it? I don't. Is it one week too stringent a deadline? Is it possible to make sure that you have like you, we can put it on the list and say like this is a problem we think we're solving? I hope it doesn't even take that long. But is that okay? Yeah, I I I'll, uh, try to see if I can uh, do it in uh, by by next week. Uh, like one week from now, I need to just reach out a few folks. Okay. Folks, I like, definitely need to hear Ian, Victor, and Collins, and also uh, see if I can find some loops time. Okay. I, I mean, I'm also fine with like slides. I know it's not the best communication, but I mean, if you want to use that as a way to comment and go back and forth on stuff, and we can link to the issues. Like, I don't. I, I'm fine with whatever. Yeah. So a G doc or it's whatever. Or, as yeah, long whatever. as it's interactive by all the people it's shared with, whether it's an issue or slides or something, that's that's fine. So, whatever is fastest or easiest, whatever. Okay, I think we beat that to death. So hopefully we'll have the problem statement next week. We'll put out the call for proposals on the list. People who want to offer a proposal that solves that problem, we'll give them speaking time in Boston. All right, Ian, floor is yours. Thank you. All right, um, I attempted to create a few slides. Uh, Will's issue is up first. Um, I, know I, will, I will upload these slides later to the data tracker. Yeah, and I can also fix anything if I got something wrong. Um, so, oh, this is, how does this work? Oh, no. Um, how do I? You're um, trying to get presentation mode? Yeah. Slideshow uh, on the upper right. Hey, click on slideshow, go to presenter okay. mode, and you're going to have to change it. There you go. OK. Got it. Got it. Great. Um, yeah, so this is the issue well filed. Um, there's at least two things in this issue. Um, the first one is just this track name meaningful now that track name is sort of just the last, last item in a um, track name space. Uh, the if track you're name sharing, space. I'm not seeing it. Oh. I see it. We, we see, see it. it. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have something pinned, Colin? He just left the meeting, so I think he's trying again. Yeah. Why don't you move forward, Ian? Okay. Um, so yeah, so I mean, the first thing that was brought up is just that the track name is just one extra tuple in a list of tuples. Um, and so I think the only real difference between if we made them all one, then currently you have to have at least one namespace tuple. And so we would have to change that number to two, I guess, so if we wanted to have equivalent functionality. So that way, the namespace tuple is always at least two chunks of data long. But otherwise, it does seem kind of equivalent to me. But I don't know. Will, go for it. It's just questioning why you would need a minimum of two tuples. Why not just one? You know, if it's a local, local host network and you just want to call your stuff Ian, then go for it. You don't, you don't need more than one. Oh, I was more saying to be functionally identical to the current draft. I, oh, OK. I thought so you were, I, I, I'm trying to like minimize like actual functional differences. And I'm trying to say, like, if you changed one to two, then that would be exactly. But you raise a great question. Do we even need it to be one or two? I, I don't know. I don't have a strong opinion. Um, oh, you still can't see it? Mm. Um, uh, it's just carry on anyway. I mean, I rejoined the meeting, reset everything. I don't know what's up, but. Uh, OK. I, oh, Alan. Carry on. <laughs> just with respect, I don't know if we're on the second bullet or not, but wildcard subscribe has a different problem, which is track alias um, and how, like, you don't know how many things are going to match. and. But when subscribe, the subscriber provides a track alias. Right. And so if subscribe to one thing, I provide one track alias. But if I make subscribe a wildcard subscribe, how many I need to provide n track aliases, and then what if more things match? And then what will the track alias be? And so there's like um there's a whole another set of problems there that I've sort of like I don't know if we need to tackle. And I will say that 
at, le at least my understanding, like subscribe space is na namespace now does enable the functionality of wildcard subscribe by you get all the announces and then you can subscribe to all of them. Like it's it's sort of wildcard announce. And so like um, it does introduce, I guess, an extra round round trip, at least the functionality is there. So talking about like, how can we shave this round trip? And like, I, maybe it's, I don't know if we need to be, if this is the problem we should be solving right now, but yeah. if other people want to want to like sink their teeth into it, I guess. Colin, I, Colin, I just uploaded the slides to data tracker. So you should be able to at least follow along. Thanks, I'll grab Al, Alan, you very much led into my, my last point, but uh, Will, go for it. Yeah, well, to, to answer that question about the, the wildcard, if, if we had a subscribe ID instead of a track ID, right, then you issue this wildcard subscription, you get a unique ID for it, and everything that matches, that's that's what's added. So but there could be more than one track. Like, should a subscribe match a single track? Right, but they're all in response to a... Uh, subscribe right so today a subscribe id uniquely identifies a track if we change right. it we, have this, not, we, would, we would need both right we need a subscribe id and a track id and then then we could do it we'd have to if go let, back to what we had we gotta go back i think if you want to implement it you got to go backwards and undo the thing that took us like a year to decide which is like who picks the track id and so if you let the server pick the publisher pick the track id then you can do wildcard subscribe that way where like they all come on that subscription, but they have track IDs that were picked by the server. Um, anyway, um, yeah. I just don't know if we want to go there right now. It, I, I mean, I only came up with a few issues immediately, but I do think the more I think about, I mean, there's a number of practical issues. Like if this was, if you were doing this say for a video call like Meet or something, then there's no rule. And almost, almost certainly it would be true that you would want to set a subscriber priority that was likely different or different tracks. Um, and so as a result, having it be a single subscribe, if you did a subscribe update, that would be weird because you would be reprioritizing everything. So I I think it's it's definitely an interesting thing to think about. But yeah, I mean that's my comment at the end is like, can we punt this till later? Because I think it um until we have everything else really well nailed down, I think it opens up a ton of questions that um and and only for the purpose of like saving a round trip but i did at least want to discuss it because it was on the issue and i know it's been discussed before so um okay my, my recommendation is i mean we can definitely consider like should we collapse namespace and name into like a single n tuple but let's not talk about wildcard subscribe <laughs> and come back to that one in six months if we really when we solved all the other problems okay right, i'm fine with that what uh, what about tracking uh collapsing name into namespace is it seems like most people are supportive of this. Is there anyone who's not supportive? Let me ask that question. Okay, it's, so the, the the thing that needs to be made clear how it's going to work. Like today, announce announces namespaces, subscribe contains a namespace, and relays match exactly, and that behavior is like specified. Um, so can you explain how it will work if announce announces n tuples and subscribe contains n tuples? What do relays do? Is that a question for me? It's a question for anybody who wants to merge these things. I mean, sorry, I you, so. I'm sorry for the notes. You said if announce announces n tuples and relays do what? Sorry. If so, announce announces an n tuple, yeah, and subscribe contains an n tuple. What? How does a relay pick the session to send to forward the subscribe to? As long as there's, as long as that normative behavior is clear and people agree that that's what it should do, then like then it's fine. Like, yeah, do you just I, take I, the last I, one off and do an exact mine. match, or do you? Is there a prefix match, or how does it work? It's. I wrote in the in the issue that issue, it could be a prefix match. And I think as long as our prefix has no holes in it, then it's robust. So you 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 announce the minimum prefix that covers all your content. That's just for efficiency. You could explicitly announce everything, but that's that's a waste of announces. So you announce the minimum prefix that covers what you're, you alone are responsible for. 
and then people people subscribe uh, to that. Okay, and then you can have overlapping prefixes announced by different people. Like I announce ABC and you announce ABCD. And someone subscribes to ABC. So I guess it's- If they subscribe to ABC, they should get both our content. Oh, that's a wild card. Um, Now I'm confused. A lot of the people talk. (laughs) Okay, okay, that that would be a wild card. Uh, Colin? Um, okay, so I, 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 I'm saying the same thing as Will here, I think, but it's like, I, I think that basically the real, so first of all, you should have to announce and subscribe to no holes, like like you can't, like y- y- you provide the first in prefixes, okay? So if I announce um, ABC, um, any subscribe that matches ABC, and that can include DEF or anything, number of things after it, but if it matches those first three tuples, exact matches, however many tuples were provided in the announce, to, um, then it gets then that subscribe gets forwarded to whoever sent that announce. And I think that that's, that's the behavior we need. It's, it's very crisp. Um, this does mean that more than, if two people, and, and today in the system, right? If two people announce exactly the same thing, they both get the subscribe for it. It's, it's okay. just, we're not changing that behavior. Right? I'm going to question you on that last one because I don't think that's normatively specified right now what happens because we haven't solved, like there's issues open about what happens if two people announce the same prefix and the draft does not say relay sends to both. Oh, 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 oh okay. I, I retract that. Let me just say that's my proposal for how it should work here. Okay. okay. And I think that any other, pre- yeah, but that's, 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 I think that's, and I think that matches what Will said too. Yeah, it is. It's the same okay. thing. Okay. Having implemented the key, I think the key thing that I wanted to get though that's that that the constraint that I'm making that makes this easy, I and the constraint that I'm proposing we should do is we should not allow to have holes in our subscribes. We shouldn't have like A B star for that tuple D. Um that, that that's going to make things quite 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 a bit more challenging to do in a high performance way in the in the relays when we implement this. But like, look, we could we could argue that later. We could open up the sort of you know, like wild cards in the middle of the tuple sequence. But I would say I would propose for now that we don't allow that, and that that will greatly simplify all of this. Can I maybe pause and ask anybody who thinks we ought to allow holes to speak now, or can we all agree that they're bad? I'm mimicking okay. that holes are bad. So okay, there you go. No, no one, no one wanted to advocate for holes. So let's assume there are no holes. Um, I'm still unclear about how we're going to normatively specify what happens if uh, if the subscriber sends one subscribe to a relay, and then that subscribe goes to two publishers, and then they both respond, subscribe, okay. Then what happens? Wait, is this an? This is not relevant to this issue. That I'm mean, not to like. Well, it sort of is because the way yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I, I think the crux of this issue is what do relays do when, how do they match subscribes to announces and Colin's proposal. And I think Will's proposal was that the subscribe can multiply when it hits a relay, like one subscribe into the relay can be n subscribes out. Is that true? Do people think that's what needs to happen or is it always one in one out? It's. It's one in one out unless you're going to a node that received the announce, right? Because then that that node is is going to it's going to be going to two different destinations. Like if I announce ABC and Cullen announces ABC and you're the node, any request you get is then going to fork to both Cullen and myself. Okay, my relay does last last announce wins. So if you announce ABC and Cullen announces ABC, if Cullen came last, Cullen's going to get it and you yeah. get nothing. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, we debated that, and I think we should resolve that. That's an issue, right? Because uh, it's ambiguous right now. Because last wins is is a DOS problem, right? I just sit there and I just make sure I'm the last one every five milliseconds. Um, okay, Suhas and then Colin. I I think we did discuss this. Uh, I agree with you, Alan, that uh, this this was the initial proposal to have last one wins but we just we just discussed this in the make before break context where you want to before going to another network you still want to set up the same track from same publisher same announce and then once the connection happens you break uh the, the previous one and so you know supporting those cases I, I think we need to have a way that uh two people can announce um on the same namespace it, it should be allowed 
and and uh, and, and if, if if the the way the names are set in such a way that you know two different applications exactly on the same namespace, then all the hell will break loose. But that's not Mock's problem to solve, right? Um, and I think I think we should kind of if someone does wrong, they'll expect they'll expect wrong behavior at some point. But I agree. We, we at least we should say that if if two people uh, uh, subscribe, an announce comes for ABC, and uh, and two people have announced that, and a subscribe comes for ABCD, it will go to both. I have questions, but Cullen. Um, I, I, I just, I, I think that, you know, what, what is said and look at the app, like, it, and again, we're on the same place of two people can't send the same data with this, you know, can't send an object with the same track name, full track name, group ID, object ID, like an, you can't have two objects with the same name that have different data in them, right? I mean, I think that's just a critical thing or, and and it, and we can't enforce that at the relays. It's just your application can't do that or else like it won't work. Um, so I, I think this is a similar category of that. Now, I'm not saying that both of those subscribes will necessarily get an okay response and to get data. I mean, most likely one of those will be rejected when they're, they're forked that way. But I think you need to do that. I think one of the problems with last wins is when you think about a distributed set of relays, coordinating who the last is across a large distributed set of relays is is a is a not a problem that can be solved easily. Um, so that's where that's why I think it's better just to to fork and let the app sort it out. Okay, so I, I'm going to propose that we table merging the namespace until we have. Because we we need to be able to solve this multiple announce and how do relays behave? What's normative? What happens if you get two OKs? How are relays supposed to handle this? I think we should have that all specked out with very simple namespace well, names. No, Alan, I, I just I I think uh, tell me why that tell me why that problem doesn't exist now without merging the namespaces. How does well it doesn't exist right now because the draft is ambiguous. It doesn't tell. I agree. Really, I agree. My, so we can my, just leave. <laughs> well, I, what I'm saying is it's a simpler, that problem is simpler to solve before we make namespaces more complicated. And so we should be able to agree on what the behavior should be when namespaces are simple, which is what currently has consensus or what track names are like, like it's very, it's very clear. It's there's namespace and name and namespaces are matched exactly. So there's not this problem of like, well, I matched ABC and ABCD. Let's just focus on what happens if there's two ABCs. No, I mean. Do you object to moving the 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 thing we currently called track name to be the thing that is the last element of the namespace? I and guess just, I mean I view that as just a that seems more of just a nomenclature thing. Yeah, it's and I think that's weird. really what people were proposing on this on this bug here originally was just like you know look we have we have two names for the same thing now that we have an array here. Um. Okay, I mean if so if 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 the proposal is announce contains an n tuple. Subscribe contains an n tuple, and you match on n minus one through a relay. You do an exact match on n minus one. I that I agree is equivalent to the current draft, and I don't have any objections. Why do you match on n minus one? Sorry, because today announce contains a one tuple, and subscribe yep. contains a two tuple, and you match on the one part. Well, for routing the sorry for routing the for routing through a relay. Oh, I thought you meant for the actual subscribe. Okay, never mind. Okay, got it. So that is equivalent to what we have today. And it also mandates that subscribe has to have at least a two tuple. Because if, yeah, you have a one, if you have a one tuple, then you're matching on zero. And that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I think that's um, what we're discussing. So right. if that is a proposal, I'm totally fine with it. It okay. does not change anything. But um, if, if, we're, if we're planning to make broader changes for like how you do matching through Relay, I think gets into this like what happens when a subscribe matches more than one announce which is like a problem we already had that's ambiguous but i think it's easier to solve when like agree how to solve it when it's two or the same before a is a subset of b okay but i mean the the current the current pr that's there is about is about matching is isn't it isn't it about matching when, like when we move this tuple is when matching when, never mind the change with adding the track name in, right? Just it's about, uh, it, it allows you to 
you know, the reason we have a tuple is so you can ask for less than a full tuple. The, like the reason you can have nine things in the namespace is because you can ask for something that only has seven of them and expect it to wildcard match the last two. Right. I mean, we created that functionality. I mean, I see the power in that functionality and I'm not saying that we should not add it for subscribe. I, I think we probably will ultimately add it for subscribe. But I think the sequencing of order, figuring out how we want to do this is to figure out how we want to resolve multiple conflicting announces as like an issue independent first, okay. and then come back and be like, now that we understand how we want to do that, now it makes sense. Now we understand what to do with this, what subscribe. The answer will fall out automatically. Okay. So look, I'm proposing we should make the next interim meeting about that, not fetch that if we're okay. still vague on that. Because like we've been taught, this is the topic we've been discussing at many meetings. Like, like I think this is a more important topic to nail down than fetch. Okay. I mean, I think there's room for both. Honestly, I don't think both will take the whole time. And oh, fair, fair. But I mean, like, I, um, this, this, this should happy, be, like we should try and happy. walk out of the next meet, uh, next interim with good answers to this. I mean, <laughs> I will, I will say, like, the, the issues about conflicting announce go back to like Tokyo or Yokohama. I mean, they've been open for a long time, and there's again, this is why we're like, hey, their mark needs PR, and I think they're assigned to you. Um, so, um, no, like, no, that's, that's fair. I have abuse taken. I <laughs> fairly, yeah. <laughs> so, and and I think I'm not sure. You're, like Ian made a point. Like when we try to write it down, that might flush out that something needs more discussion. I think maybe we may be here because some people I think had a clear idea that yeah, you're definitely going to have your. It's definitely subscribes fan out and hit multiple announces, and some people are like, nope, there's one in one out. So it's, like, it's we it's not, get it sounds like we've agreed to table this. So I'm going to close the queue after Will. We'll move on to the next slide. Go ahead, Will. Yeah, I was just, it was my issue. I'm going to, I would volunteer for the face-to-face in, -face interim to prepare some slides for this, for, to illustrate the use cases, right? Show some pictures of what happens and then some alternate solutions. And then we can debate those uh, at the meeting. Thank you, Will. All right, Ian, let's move on. Um, so who's writing a PR for merging track name? Is it me? Is it Will? Is it someone else? Do you mean one that keeps the current draft functionality and just gets rid of track name and subscribe? Yep. Yeah, I don't care. Oh. And someone can write it. I'm I'm happy to do it. I just want to make sure I know who who's doing it. Okay, I will do it unless I don't get to it, and then maybe I'll try to co-op someone else. But uh, it seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, I don't I don't mind doing it. Although I would rather do it after we've solved the problem of the duplicate announce because we're just going to write another PR. Like to me, it's an intermediate step, right? Um, that is not the final step. Yeah, but we've had the duplicate announce problem for yeah a long time. I mean, uh, I don't know. But we can in Boston, and then we can write a PR that addresses that and merges in the track net, which is the lesser problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me think about. It. Okay. Um, I don't want to delay progress on one thing that we have something close to consensus on for something more ambiguous. So I guess that'd be my hesitance. But I will move on. Um, priorities. Uh, Victor was kind enough to write a few things about um, the current priority situation. Victor, do you want to talk about the slide? Yeah, so we currently have a uh, when you so if you change uh, so currently you specify a publisher priority in every string header uh, and what happens if you change it is that uh, the draft currently says that you're supposed to track all outstanding publisher priorities for every track and uh, pigs and men of all of them and in practice that is like really obnoxious because you have to keep it within track, so there is a lot of uh, bookkeeping to do. And uh, it turns out that this isn't, isn't really what we actually want. Uh, on the issue, I went through like the use case of why we would want this. And uh, I think the correct answer is uh, if you have a, a publisher priority in the beginning of a PEEP, uh, the way it works is that the priority for that PEEP uh, and if the other PEEP uh, has different priorities, just delivered with different priority. 
and that priority applies uh, after subscriber priority, but before anything in, inside the group, before we apply ascending and descending order. Uh, As an individual, I will note that this this has the benefit of stability. Like once you decide what priority you're going to send something, unless the subscriber reprioritizes their subscription, um, it doesn't change as new objects arrive or new like other things arrive, which is sort of a nice property. Um, but anyway, thoughts? I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Can somebody walk me through this again? Uh, okay, so the proposal is uh, the way you interpret publisher priority in the PIP header is that the publisher priority is the number that applies after subscriber priority, but before group ascending and descending. And you specifically use it to order this specific thing and nothing else. You do not like reapply priority, publisher priority from one to another. So, so just to clarify then is if there was a subscriber priority, it would all like, like, like it would like, we basically don't need peeps at this point. Everything's still just now, now, because the publisher, pri if the subscriber priority would override, so, so the publisher priority just wouldn't matter, nor, nor would the group ordering really, it would just be the subscriber priority. No, it it still matters because the subscriber priority in this scheme is a single thing per track, but you can right. assign different publisher priority within track to different peeps. I see. So the subscriber priority. Oh, okay. Okay. I, now I understand. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. It took me a little while. Okay. Yeah. So I think the key is what's what's not well understood is the current status quo which is that the, the second most important thing is published prior priority. And the way published priority is computed is within that subscription, you take all pending peeps that are to come in that prescription and take the minimum of that. So that uh, whatever like subscription happens to have like a, a, a high prior, a very important peep like lurking in it somewhere uh, elevates that track to the front of the queue. Uh, the problem is that that's, I mean, having just implemented that last week, it's pretty as, Victor said it's pretty intensive to to implement. It's doable, but there's a lot of bookkeeping and there's some inefficiencies there. Alan, I, I jumped. Please to you say I'm, I'm not again. Say say that part again. I'm not. I'm not following. Okay, but... so to implement what is currently in the draft, right? Uh, well, so I mean, a way to do it, which I ended up after a fair amount of thought came up on, was to have a scoreboard in every subscription data structure that stores all the peep priorities coming up, all the stream priorities coming up in that subscription. Every time you put a peep that has some 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 priority in it, and if it changes, the, if it reduces the minimum, then you have to go to every stream serving that subscription, update its overall set prior, its overall stream priority because the minimum has changed and it's the second order of its priority has changed. Um, and similarly, every time a stream completes, uh, then then like again, the, the minimum can change. The minimum can be increased. If the minimum increases, then again you have to go through all the subscriptions. All sorry, all the all the all the streams or pending streams in that subscription and update its priorities and update the streams that are under them in quick to to faithfully and completely implement what's described now. This min this min calculation is very heavyweight. Okay, but can you describe that in terms of, um, I mean, the way we talked about it before is deciding which object to send next. So, and what the implementation everyone had was a, you know, trivial priority queue, basically, they stuff stuff in, like, so, isn't it that? Well, uh, so, I, well, I mean, obviously, there's there's what you send quick queue, quick stream priorities to, and also what object you decide to stuff into quick next, and those are, like, related, but somewhat different things. But if you're faithfully like implementing this, this prior, the current priority scheme in both in both realms, every time a new heap slash object arrives, the lower public with a lower publisher priority than you see it on that subscription, then the priority of every single stream 
slash object slash peep in that prescription in that subscription changes. Uh, no, no, it doesn't. No, that's exactly <laughs> what's in the draft. No, that's what the Maybe draft you think that sucks, but that's what's in the draft. Okay, okay. I, like, like, you I'm, cannot I'm, implement what's in the draft of a simple priority queue without like having to occasionally just rewrite priorities for a bunch of strings because things changed. Okay. Can somebody point me at the draft of like an object comes in and it somehow changes the priority of other things? That's section, the four, section four, I want to say it's the fourth paragraph okay, that yeah. talks about uh, that, that, that the published priority is essentially the minimum of all priorities of pending objects. Okay. Well, while Colin is reading that, uh, okay. I, so, so look, my confusion, but like, like, I think that sucks. So like, if something's like that, so like, I mean, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> so I guess Colin's convinced. Okay. No, no, well, uh, that's, not, I mean, I'm just, I'm really surprised that it, th that does not sound like what I thought we agreed to. So um, I will read it, whatever, we'll uh, go through. Yeah. The, but I mean, I'm, I'm probably not opposing your change. I'm just confused about it. Yeah, so, so to be clear, I mean, I think this is Victor's proposal originally, and like his intent was different than what's written. And I think just somewhere in the wordsmithing, it got um, abused into this. And, and maybe somebody wants it this way, but th if so, they're not, they're not speaking up right now. Um, okay, so one of my questions is, do you not end up having to keep at least some similar bookkeeping bookkeeping in, ca in case the subscriber sends an update to the priority? And then you still have to have for the yes. subscription a pointer to all the streams so that if the subscriber says, oh, I was just kidding, this thing's high pri now, you have to go through and set the stream priority and all those streams to be higher. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you that need, is a problem. You need that anyway, which is the same structure you would use to handle the reverse, except you don't have to update it as often. It's just in the subscriber case, it's only on subscribe update, but on the way the draft is currently written, it's every time a new peep arrives on the subscription, a new later peep, or a, every, every time you every time you pop a stream from the queue, every from, time when you deliver like when you destroy a queue, you destroy a stream, you need to check for this. Okay, so yes. it's not necessarily about more data structure, but it's about more frequently traversing it. Uh, there is still a data structure to keep track of all the, like what is what is what this data structure what, what the the data structure this proposal would eliminate is a per subscription data structure that tracks all the priorities you that are currently pending that you have to continuously pop and add to, like I, I like what I have is a scoreboard a map of all all two hundred fifty five priorities versus how many streams are pending with each of those priorities, like a count, and that count is continuously imp incremented or decremented as, as streams are, are added or create or destroyed. That could be eliminated because now it's just the subscriber ID that if, now you still need to point to all the streams in a subscription, which I which I think you kind of need to do anyway, at least our data structure already, our data structure already had that for a subscription. Um, it doesn't have one for all the pending streams, which is another issue, but we'll, we'll get we can talk about that later. Okay. Victor, you've been waving your hand furiously. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm yeah, done. I have to go in a minute. Uh, I was going to say for subscriber priority, it's a uh, it's a bit uh, easier, but uh, because so for at least for subscriber priority, like you already keep a list of streams for uh, which are associated with subscription. So if like you need to tear that subscription, you need to tear down all of those streams. So mm -hmm. you just iterate and like recompute, which is annoying, but. For the publisher, as currently defined in the spec, you not only need to update, you also have to first go all over streams, see what objects are pending, find their priority, publisher priority, and then you need to update. So it's actually like two passes instead of one pass. So that's like ultra annoying. Okay. Yes, I agree. I mean, it's definitely annoying. Um, all right. I have to go, guys. Um, I hope you solve it in four minutes, and I hope it's a great solution. I look forward to it. Okay. Sue House? I don't have comment on this one because I still am unclear on some of the things. Uh, I, I need to read, read through the draft once more. But one editorial question I had is that I'm starting to implement the peeps, but can we rename it to something, or should we still call it peeps? <laughs> Just, um. I'm just throw it out there. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, um, I am agnostic about this. I, I think some people are beginning to become fond of peeps, which um, uh, I, have, I have no opinion on. However, do you have an, do you have a concrete proposal that we can maybe quickly call consensus on? Like I had subgroup. I'm not saying it's the good subgroup. One. Yeah. Does any can does anyone um, 
Does anyone object to subgroup? I thought Will had a something I like better. But yeah, I, I proposed either stream because it relates directly to QuickStream or block because it denotes contiguity and it's not a term that is overloaded in any other way. Which do you prefer, Will? Group, subgroup, block. Um, so I mean, to, to get at this quickly, we need to reach a consensus, and like multiple proposals make it harder, not easier. Which is why I'm asking you to. And I would to, call it screen because that's what it okay. is, right? Um, at least the Slack had support for subgroup. If, if you're asking for consensus, I'm just saying I'm not attached to it. I'm just saying if you're asking for some consensus, we have some consensus on there. Do, do a okay. poll, right? It's not hard. Yeah, let's do a poll. Okay, raise your hand if you prefer. Um, uh, Subgroup. No, I need to raise your hand in the thingy. In, in, in well, neat. I meant to do a poll over the broader group, not just this the people who showed up for this meeting. Right. Okay. All right. We can send it out to the list. Look, I, I think in that poll, I, I I think that there was a quite a bit of pushback on stream directly just because it was so confusing with quick stream. But yeah. It, maybe it needs to be stream plus another word or something. Will maybe you could propose a slight variant of stream for that one. Okay. Um, um, I, mean, I had stream alias long ago. Whatever. Okay. I, so this is gonna make Suhas I'm, I'm unhappy because I know he doesn't want this in his code at any point. Um, but I, I like. I, I feel like this is a sidebar, and this bike shed is a sidebar at the interim. Like we could get in a room during the interop and like yell about it and get to like some name that we can then go for consensus on. We're not, we're not like, there are too many options at this point uh, to get through it in two minutes. Yep. So we're not going to try. Let's try to resolve this issue. So, I mean, where are we at? Do people need to like reread the draft still and then assess this or are we, are we ready for PR in this, in this space? Would any object to having a PR in this space because this is like fundamentally the wrong way to go? Uh, at least for me, I, I need to understand the problem better. But uh, okay. one way or the other way does not does not. All right. Um, G given uh, like the shock that people are are expressing when they understand what this what the spec currently says, um, Victor, are you willing to write a PR on sure. this issue? Okay. I, I like I'm optimistic we'll get somewhere. Yeah. Maybe 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 we're gonna have some. Maybe people are gonna want to do things differently. But okay. So all right. So I guess our due out here is to have another have a PR related to this issue. I, and I did reread the draft and it didn't seem to match what was said in this call. So there's obviously some okay. confusion. Obviously we need some PRs on this space, but- It, uh, it is thing, arguably it is arguably ambiguous. Um, Alan convinced me that the proper interpretation of the of the draft though is is okay. what, what you so, stated. But one thing that I do think that we need to, to, to have the state in, that we need to write this, the only thing the relay can ever decide is what object to send next. That's all priorities can, that's the only thing that can mean on priorities. So let's try and write it in that form because like that's part of why the draft is so ambiguous right now is this trying to talk about subscribes this don't actually have anything to do with subscribes these have to do with what objects you send next <laughs> well i mean sort of but, but like the <laughs> a lot of the priorities are are are, are like scope to subscribes right well i think i, I do uh, think that we yeah i agree with colin I, I do think we we got ourselves a bit wrapped around an asshole by trying to make everything subscribe oriented and as like appealing as that was initially, I think now it's getting us into this weird situation where we're prioritizing subscriptions, which sounds convenient, but actually is like an inordinate pain in the ass because really you want to prioritize data, not subscriptions. Well, so this is, this is arguably like arguing about subscriber priority, which I think is not on the table right now, but I certainly invite further issues and PRs in that, in that. Um, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to remove the idea of subscriber priority or any of those things. Of course, that's communicated in a subscribe and all of those things. But what the relay needs to do is decide is use that information it has to decide what ob yeah. object to send next. I'm not saying I mean, we shouldn't have what we call yeah. Well, so yeah. I mean, I, I think the I think the the priority text currently does that and would continue to do that. I don't think that's changing in this, but right now it is a painful data structure. Okay, so we're out of time. Uh, we're meeting again in yeah. two weeks. I think there's a lot of do outs. I think Sue Haas is going to go right up the the. Um, the uh, fetch use case, and uh, Victor is going to write a PR for this, and uh, Ian's going to write a PR for the other thing. So, um, lovely. So, Will, thank you for scribing. Um, if for some reason you have not signed the blue sheets, please do so uh, immediately. It's 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 in the um, the link is in the chat.
but I think we got everybody. Uh, and I will see you guys in two weeks. Thank you. Bye bye. I'll take another look at Will's PR if, if you haven't already. So, about extensibility. <laughs>